I uh, personally uh, originally brought on Hunter because I was dealing with just a tremendous amount of challenges from the exit, um, like just emotionally from the exit from Mimosa and the uh, also loss of of my my grandmother and yeah various other both combination of personal and professional things that he became like a life coaching and strategic coaching support um originally he was just like a homie and i needed some additional support that it really turned into kind of like a really strong infrastructure for me that i speak with him every day so every day of the week it doesn't have to be always uh, personal. A lot of it's professional. It's getting my task list. It's it's something that uh, gets me ready for the day and and uh, centers me. And it's and it's frankly uh, it's a highlight of my morning. And it really gets me going um, in ways that uh, prior to feeling lost, feeling overwhelmed, feeling just the day's weight is more than uh i felt at times i was like man this is just so much um and then his role evolved getting the opportunity to have him even a greater capacity in in our brands and and working in other ways um was was not just a a, a fun journey but it was a treat to have him and um and so he is uh, by all definitions, a strategic life coach for me and and for a few other people, including uh, Jeremy, um, which he gave me permission to share that, but um, Gillespie and then and uh, and others. So today, I just uh, I'm I'm I feel fortunate to have him share um, some things that he has gone through that you can maybe relate to yourself, maybe not, but. Um, he has, has given strategies and perspectives that I didn't have. And I'm hoping that today you take away, um, some, some strengths, um, personally that I didn't have when I first started, uh, but incredibly grateful for you, my friend. And, uh, I want to give you the floor to share, or show your screen or do what, do whatever you want to do, because I think that, um, you know, there's, there's a lot that, we're going to take from this. And I, again, I'm incredibly grateful for you to be here, my man. I appreciate it, Brad. I appreciate you too. And uh, thanks everybody for having me. Um, I actually don't have a screen to share today. Uh, I originally was uh, because um, traditionally uh, my original intent, the way I usually work is to tell you all about the pillars, uh, dealing with stress and how to conquer your work stress. Um, entrepreneurs in particular kind of like kind of like uh, lighthouses, like they're constantly getting hit by either little waves or big waves. And some of it's good. It's people that come to them because they know that they're idea people and that they know, hey, I got you, you know, that this person has ideas, this person can help me. And entrepreneurs, the way they are, at the center of every entrepreneur is this little burning ember that is, oh man, how, how can I help people? Uh, and because of that, like it's taxing, it's draining. And so one of the things I always do is is try to help them understand that, even though they have to pick up this pack, put it on and start throwing things in it every day. It doesn't mean they have to carry it all day long. So one of my jobs is always to help kind of unpack some of that stuff for Brett. Um, so things I talk about include like organizational adjustments, scaling, um, teaching mindset and teaching mindset. So you can teach mindset to all of your people that you have working with you so that they can act as owners without even really realizing that. And uh, the pillars that I use uh, as a former alligator trapper uh, are uh, you identify that alligator first, which is the, uh, um, you know, your problem. And then you come up with a plan and envision that plan, including the worst case scenario to that problem. Uh, so, you know, for mine, there was a case of me having to punch an alligator in the mouth, which came to fruition. That's another story for another day. It was successful. Uh, but then you take your shot at getting that guy, whatever it is, maybe it's a promotion, maybe it's a new client, maybe whatever it is. And then you absorb the recoil from that and you adjust uh, based on, you know, whatever your result is. Um, and all those are true things. All of those things are I teach. Um, 
you have an issue, you go, okay, is this the worst that can, this is the worst that can happen. Am I okay with this approach? If that happens, as long as you are, you take your shot. If you don't, you adjust your plan until you're okay with the worst case scenario. And then you absorb the recoil, your result, uh, you adjust, but you never react. Reaction is, it's just never going to take you anywhere. And, um, you know, the truth is that the only thing we have control in is our reaction, our own mind, that pause and intermission, um, you know, the space after the stressor came um, that has been applied. And then the reaction that, that creates like a, a regular chemical reaction, it truly is a chemical reaction. And that's where, you know, we live because we have to have control of our own minds. Um, the problem comes when um, people don't act as we would. A uh, client, a colleague, they do something. You're like, I would never do that. That's not fair. Okay. Well, yeah. Um, and that's and that's the thing is it's not them that let you down. It's your expectations. You expected that everyone in the world would just do business the way that you do business. That they would do the, the right thing. And not everybody will. Um, and it's really not fair because it it's it's not. But I think we learned when we were like six that life's not fair. Um, so the trick is to try to come in and have those zero expectations, you know, just a loose look at what things could be. Um, no expectations on it, just coming in open and allowing it and then identifying and planning, taking your shot. And then absorbing that and adjusting. Um, so that was the plan. I was going to really, you know, give you a whole bunch of real good stuff to, to go with. Um, but instead, I thought I would tell you how I failed. Uh, then Brett's going to tell you that it wasn't a failure because he was there when it started. And this is a bit of a cleansing thing for me. So I apologize for it being as raw as it's going to be. It's just the way it is. Um, back in May of 2023... I drove with my son from up here in uh, beautiful, sunny Indiana down to Florida to watch my uh, my daughter graduate with her two-year degree and her high school diploma at the same time on May the 4th, which, by the way, that Star Wars holiday will never sit well with me again. Um, I had my son stay with his mom. They really needed their time, obviously, like even though they're getting older, uh, he had been grounded from his phone for his games for a while, <laughs> like he had vaped at school, you know, typical, typical teenage stuff, like, but we were working through it. He's, you know, he, he was diagnosed at one point with uh, Asperger's, but as I pointed out, so was Elon Musk and he seems to be doing all right for himself, but we were on the right path. So the morning of May the 4th, I got a text and I'm going to read it verbatim. Uh, and uh, the funny thing is I always feel guilty or like I've done something wrong as soon as I read this or like everyone's going to judge me. So this has been part of the thing for me is to understand and adjust. The text said, Vance has let us know of your physical and emotional abuse at your home. You will not be allowed to see him and your daughter does not want you at her graduation. You are not welcome. That was from their mom. Uh, Apparently, we were very tired of being grounded because the next thing that popped on my phone was the alert that he had taken all of the <laughs> restrictions that were on his phone off, and it was uh, he was out there in the wilderness with it. Um, and I, by the way, and I forgive my kids, uh, you know, for everything that's happened. Um, I had not been as devastated as that in my life. Um, she wouldn't answer any of my texts back, uh, so. I pretty much was left with uh, no choice but to just drive back to Indiana by myself, completely devastated, 12 hours of living in here, um, supposed to be signing a, uh, you know, paperwork on a house the next day, happiest with my fiance, happiest day. Uh, Brett knows because I called him um, to tell him that I'd never do any of that, which he knew already. Um, but most of it was just me kind of blubbering. <laughs> so it was a tough day. Uh, months later, I got word that uh, they were wanting me to sign rights away. Um, they did file with uh, Children and Family Services. And again, I know this is all very raw, so you'll forgive me. Um, the things um, I were accused of were things like uh, he had said that I locked him in his room with no food and water. 
a myriad of other interesting things that uh, there was no lock on the door there. It was very interesting. There were four or five of us living in the house. It's, it's things that were just, it, they just weren't true. And to be honest, um, anyone that knows me, it just caught me completely off guard. Um, and I was, I was pretty, I was, I was devastated. Um, I had showed up at the uh, department of family services before they ever called me to say, Hey, I think this is going on. What do I do? Um, but the truth uh, is that, you know, I had lost pretty much, um, all of my family, my mom, dad, grandparents, uncles, aunts, um, I've been homeless. Um, and this was pretty much the lowest point of my life. You know, everybody wants to just be a good dad. Um, that's what they're looking for is just let me be a good dad, a good man. And this was a really big shot of somebody going, Hey, you're not, um, and then a couple of days later, I received an alligator tooth necklace. My dad left me when he died with his ashes in it um, from my daughter and a thanks from the graduate envelope. And that one took me to my knees again when we started all over. So why all of this raw stuff and why have I like just laid my bare soul out there for you? What I'm I guess what I'm saying is, um, you know, there's a there's a crazy video out there of somebody showing why you wear polarized glasses in the Everglades. And I'll, I'll try to send that to everybody later on. Um, but he's just looking at the water and he puts on these polarized glasses and there's like a 10 foot alligator laying in this canal. And that's what I want to tell you is that sometimes the alligator is hiding under the water. You don't have a plan. Uh, it just grabs you and it drags you down and brings you to a point where you have to truly decide if you're okay with that oblivion. And that's where I was, honestly, that I was I was pretty much okay with it. I was like, yeah, whatever happens, I'm good. I'm done. It's too much. Um, and I had to rebuild from that day. What Stoics called the Citadel. Um, just uh, I it's just my fortress. It's a place you can go inside yourself and regroup, where you can envision your worst and adjust. Um, the truth is, mine was completely in shambles. It was absolutely. To quote Ron Burgundy, I'm reduced to rubble. Um, my mindset was gone. Um, even my relationship, we had, we had just signed the papers and bought this house. My relationship was absolutely in shambles. Um, we weren't us anymore. Um, and every day I just sat around and waited for paperwork to see what was coming next. And then uh, and one day I just woke up. And I'll never forget because my fiance actually looked at me and she was like, what? And and I just woke up and I just, none of that shit's in my control. Like I, I can't do anything about that. The only thing I'm doing right now is letting my mind and my worry over these things that I obviously had nothing to do with that everyone knows, um, control every single portion of my day from that point forward. Um, some would say you've got to let go and let God. And that, that works for me. I'm a big fan of the guy upstairs. Big fan. Maybe number one. That's why you know, I got the look. Anyway, um, the thing is, is that what I had to realize is that all I could control is what I can control. Like, it's that space. I couldn't control my son or daughter. And I don't hate them. I love them. Um, you know, I wish their mom had called me, like the social worker said, and told her. Um, there's a whole ton of things that I could wish for. But to be honest, like it doesn't fucking help either. Uh, none of it does. Uh, I can't control anything else in my life, anyone else in my life. Uh, just the thoughts. You can't control anyone else in your life. No matter what you think, you cannot control anyone else in your life. And so I just had to get back to my roots. I concern myself with what fits in here. This is what I concern myself with and what I worry about all day is not worry, sorry, what I think about. The things that deserve my attention I, are the things that are here. And most of those are here um, because there's one singular point that sticks with all of that. And that is the obstacle is the way. You have to find a reason to be glad in whatever horrible things have happened. You have to find a way to let whatever that terrible thing was make you better, make you stronger. Um, you know, uh, you have to, for me, I had to be confident in who I am and knowing that I am a good successful man, that 
that I was a good dad. I am a good dad. My, my stepchildren <laughs> call me dad. Um, you know, my nine-year-old stepson, I was on a meeting with Brett and Jonathan yesterday. He took the time to make a little football jersey, and he brought it over uh, while he was there. And he was like, hey, this number 47, because you said you like John Lynch. And uh, he said, you can look at that while you're on this meeting. I'm like, I, I have to realize I can't control even my kids. Um, I have to be patient, wait for them to come around. And it, and it's and it's terrible, like it's horrible. But the, the truth is that I failed to manage my stress for months. And because of that, I'm really thankful because it made me hear my own advice again and figure out um, if what I was teaching is still part of me. All those all those pillars identify, you know, plan and try to plan for the what's the worst possible outcome. Decide if you're OK with that. Take your shot. Absorb the recoil. And I'm I'm happy to say that uh, that that it is. Uh, I came to the other side of it. Um, uh, it's like, uh, Thomas Edison once there's a story about Thomas Edison once seeing his factory burning to the ground and he saw his son there and he goes, son, run home, get your mother and, and your, uh, sister. And he goes, why? He goes, they're never going to see a fire like this again. Like, and that's kind of the attitude you have to go in with some things, even the things that will break you in the moment. You have to understand that there's a reason for them and that, you are going to let them make you a better version of yourself, the best version of yourself. And I forgot that for a minute, but I won't let you. Um, thank you, everybody. I know it was raw. I truly appreciate your time. If anybody has any questions or anything thank for you, me. Buddy. Thank please you, buddy. Thank you. Um, wow. And I, I want to I want to let people jump in, but um, real fast, I want... Like I like I mentioned, um, sub chat. Hey, good to see you, buddy. Um, I know some of you came in midway, but um, so Hunter, you know, he has been a staple for my, you know, uh, stress management and and allowing me to, you know, really get through my day a lot better. And so, um, what what we're doing here today is if anybody wants to sit with him if anybody wants to meet with hunter get an hour just to unload your day get some perspective um i'll personally take care of that hour uh, you need to meet with him this week not, not you don't have to meet this week but connect with him this week and so that way mm -hmm. uh, you guys can i ideally feel kind of the same just shift and change it's it's it is wonderful the things that he does and and the stories and and the perspective all that but if in fact that's something of interest for you i will take care of that you just reach out to him and he'll coordinate that but i want to be i want to share that with you and and that's my gift to you guys um if you uh if you want to check and connect with him both either personally or professionally okay just please over the next week connect with him uh, and Hunter, please put your information down here. So that way, uh, everybody has it. And we'll also follow up in chat. Um, but, uh, or follow up in, uh, in an email, but again, I just, uh, I invite you to, even if you've even slightly considered it and, and, and I know, uh, some of you have, have sat down with him before and you can, uh, I'm not going to out anybody, but if you wanted to share any of your, experiences too I, I encourage you to do that as well but thank you man thank you for being so bold and so uh vulnerable to share today so i appreciate it. i appreciate the time uh, i truly enjoy and it's not it's not uh typically it's not a lot of personal things depending on the person uh we also i also help people scale uh, people with their organizational problems people with other people problems but for entrepreneurs you guys just carry so much man i'm like, I'm just, uh, I'm in awe a lot of times of the things that you don't even realize you're carrying. But uh, I appreciate you. Again, I know that was super raw. And, uh, you know, um, I appreciate you guys just giving me your time for a minute. Thank you, Brett, for that, too. And thank you.